Hello everyone, Wayne Steinkoff here with Swank Cake Design, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you guys how easy it is to create swanky and edible Christmas ornaments using Fabulace and chocolate. I can't think of a better combination, and you know what? Christmas is right around the corner, so we better get started. Okay, we're going to start by making the ornament ball itself, uh, which we'll do by using a mold and some chocolate candy melts. Now, if you are an experienced chocolatier or you know how to temper chocolate, you could certainly use uh, real chocolate for this. Um, but if you want to do something quick and easy, then candy melts will work just fine, and there are many, many brands to choose from. Uh, there are also many different uh, ball molds that you can use. This particular one right here uh, comes with two halves on the um, mold itself, which you are going to have to cut in to pieces in order for this to work. So you can see here I have two pieces and this is what it looks like when you buy it. Okay, so get your two halves ready and it takes about um, four ounces of, of chocolate per ornament, uh, but you don't really have to measure it or weigh it. If you fill one half or one, one cavity here of your ball mold almost full, then you'll have enough. Okay, so I have some melted and ready to go here. We'll just pour this right in until it's almost full. Okay, then you take your other half of your mold and put it right on top, just like that. And then you'll use binder clips to secure it together. Now you will want to twirl this all around like this so that it completely fills and covers the mold. Now this is the part where you can't really multitask because you're going to have to put this in the refrigerator, set your timer for two minutes, okay? Set it in there just like this, set your timer. When the timer goes off, go in the refrigerator, turn it over, but don't just turn it over, give it a little shake like this, okay? Put it back in the refrigerator for two minutes. Two minutes goes by, take it out, flip it over, give it a shake. You'll want to do that for five times. So that's a total of 10 minutes there that you're going to have to really pay attention to this. Uh, if you don't, you could run the risk of having a thin spot or in the wall of the ball, and then it could crack or even break on you. So really pay attention to it. And uh, if you want to make multiple ornaments, you could definitely do that. But two minutes per rotation and do that for uh, five times. After that fifth time, uh, the chocolate inside is going to be hard enough that it won't move around anymore and you won't have to do anything to it, but you will need to leave it in there for at least another 10 minutes before it will be ready to come out of the mold. Uh, when you remove it from the refrigerator after the second 10 minutes, if the mold gives you any resistance when you're pulling it apart, it's just not ready. You'll need to put it back in and then just watch it, okay? So we'll put this aside and I will show you what it looks like uh, when one is ready. So here I have one, okay? And what I usually do is I'll take one half off like this, and then I'll cup the other half in my hand and pull it out like that. Now, most of the time when you're handling chocolate, you will want to use gloves or something that would prevent you from dulling the surface of your chocolate or getting fingerprints on it. But in this case, we do want to dull it down because we're going to put some luster dust on it. So you don't really need to wear gloves for this if you don't want to, but we do need to get rid of that seam. See how pronounced that seam is right there. And I'm just going to use my plastic scriber tool. Um, you could use a knife too, uh, but you're literally just going to drag this tool along the seam, okay? I'm not really cutting it so much as I'm dragging it across, okay? Okay, once you're happy with that, then you want to go ahead and, and get off any uh, little stray pieces of chocolate. 
and then you can dull it down with the heat of your hand and your palm. Okay? Now, if you have really hot hands, you don't want to handle this for too long because you'll melt it. So if you have hot hands, you can keep an ice pack off to the side to cool your hands off with. Um, but just make sure that you don't melt the ball and just get it dulled down. All right, once you're happy with that, then we can go ahead and color it. Um, but I do want to put a little piece of a bamboo skewer in there so that I don't have to touch it with my fingers after I apply the color. Now, where you put this bamboo skewer should be the top of the ornament and we'll, it, the hole will be covered up by the uh, ornament cap. So on this particular one, um, the seam that's going around the middle there, I am going to cover with a piece of lace. So either this or this will be the top. So the one thing you want to make sure when you're doing this is you don't want to wiggle this around like this. You literally want to drill it in uh, so that it hangs on to this and it doesn't make too big of a hole. Okay, so I'm going to go right to there. And like I said, I'm just drilling, okay? I'm pushing and drilling at the same time. If for some reason this side of your ornament is thin, then you can switch it around and put your um, skewer in on the other side and try that, okay? But this is what we're looking for. Now you don't necessarily want to pick this up and twirl it around. You just want to be able to hold it while you're putting the rest of your luster dust on there. Okay. Now the luster that I'm using is going to be Ultra Pink from the Sugar Art. And I'm just using a, a dry fluffy brush to put the luster on. Okay. And you could use really any color that you want to. And you notice I started with a, a pinkish colored chocolate for the for the ball itself. That sort of gives me a nice background color. Sort of like a primer when you're painting. So you can see how having the stick in here allows me to work on this without actually touching the ball. And I can ter carefully turn it upright and finish putting my, my dust on there. Now I'm using this stick so that I don't touch the ball after I put my color on there. And the reason being is the color will come off on your fingers and leave little spots. So uh, in order to seal in that color, I'm going to spray this with a clear edible lacquer. All right. And you want to be careful, just like any time you paint anything with a spray, uh, that you don't put the coat on too heavy um, because it will run and drip. So this is what we're looking for right here. Now it looks a little glossy right now, but as this dries, it will turn into more of a matte or a satin finish. Uh, if you did want it extra glossy, let, let this first coat dry and then put on another coat and it will be nice and glossy. Okay, but I'm going for more of a satin or a matte finish on my ornaments. And I have one here ready to go. Okay, and this is what it looks like when it dries. So we have a nice satin finish. So now we're ready to start decorating it uh, with our lace. Now we are using Fabulace for this. Uh, Fabulace is our edible, flexible sugar lace. And if you're not familiar with Fabulace, go ahead and check out our other uh, five minute little tutorials that I did. They're in there called Fabulace Quick Tips. And that will get you um, accustomed to everything that you need to know about Fabulace. Okay, so I have a strip here ready to go. All right, and I've pre-measured this strip so that I know it goes around my ball perfectly. Okay. Now you're wondering, how do I get my lace to stick to the ball? Well, we're going to use water for this. You can use water, you can use piping gel, 
you can use Tylos glue, you can use several different things as glue, um, but you want to make sure that it doesn't stay too wet too long. So I'm just going to use a few quick spritzes of water, and you can do this with water through your airbrush, or you can use a spritz bottle like I have here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and spritz it. And after this is spritzed, you have to work fairly fast because this will start softening the lace, and if you've spritzed it with too much water, it will actually break it down. Now, because there is a seam around the center of this ball, that will actually help me line up where my lace is supposed to go. Okay, so we'll go ahead and lay this down right there. And I'm literally just going to roll the ball along the center of the strip. Until I get right around to the beginning there. And you can barely see where those two meet, right? Alright, now I can go ahead and press the lace into place. Now you can use all sorts of lace for this. Um, just make sure that it's relative to the size of your ornament. Now, if you have a pattern that you really like, but you think, oh, that may be too big for my ornament, think about how you can cut down the lace into smaller pieces and use it on the ornament. All right, look at how beautiful that is. Okay, but we are not finished because Although that's pretty enough on its own, and that will work as an ornament, I do want to put a little piece of lace on the top and on the bottom just to round it out. And it just so happens that I have these little guys right here that are the perfect size to fit in that area. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. We'll spritz those. And then very carefully, we'll center that right on the top there. Now, if you have a piece of lace that's being stubborn and doesn't want to lay down and doesn't want to stick, then you can just take a, a paintbrush with a little bit of water on it, sneak up underneath a part that may not be sticking down, and just attach it that way. Okay. Also, when you're spraying the water on your lace, you may want to let the lace sit for just a minute or two so it will absorb some of the water, soften up a bit, and then it will be more tacky and it will behave better for you. Okay, But don't let it sit too long or it will turn to mush. All right, so look at that. Look at how pretty that is and how that finishes off the top and the bottom. And the great thing about this particular combination of lace is that your ornament can hang this way, like I said, and that would be the top or the bottom. Or if we turn it up on its side, look at that. This could be the top and it could hang that way. How pretty is that? Okay. All right, but now you're saying, what about the top? What about the ornament cap? I have a really cool solution for that. All right, guys, you are going to love this. The ornament cap that we're going to put on our chocolate ball is nothing more than a mini Reese's cup. They come in a bag like this and they're unwrapped. Okay, so they're very, very small, but they're the perfect size and shape for our ornaments. So here's a finished example of what one looks like. Very pretty, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to take a piece of cloth covered floral wire, and I'm using the white here, um, and it shouldn't be more than, it should be around 24 or 26 gauge. You don't want it any thinner, and you don't necessarily want it any thicker either. So 24 or 26 gauge, and you'll need a pair of pliers, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bend this around something round. It could be a dowel, in this case I'm using my paintbrush handle, just so I have a nice round hook. 
All right, so I've bent it around. And now I need to bring these two ends together like this and start bending it so that I have two straight pieces that I can put down into my ornament cap. And you just need to fiddle with it until this loop part right here stays like a loop and the two little legs sticking out are like little legs. So that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to hold these two ends together like that. And if you have a piece that's a little bit longer than the other like I have there, go ahead and cut that off because you want both sides to be the same length, okay? Okay, now like I said, we're going to take the piece and have the two straight pieces together and I'm just going to put it right down in the center of my Reese's cup and I'm going to push until I feel it touch the table. Okay. All right. And then you'll want to pick it up and then push it on through your Reese's the rest of the way. Okay. And you want to push it a little bit further than what you think you want. Okay. Now I'm going to take my needle nose pliers and I'm going to hold on to my wire right there. And I'm going to bend each one back at a 90 degree angle. Okay, so I have, you can see it there. The wires come out and I bend it at a 90 degree angle that way and the other one at a 90 degree angle that way. Okay, so I remove that so you can see that a little bit better. And I'll call these my feet for the wire. And you don't want the length of the feet to be any wider than the width of your Reese's cup because then otherwise you'll see them sticking out from underneath and we don't want that. So once you've got that done, then you can pull the Reese's cup back down and the feet are securely touching the bottom of your Reese's cup. How cool is that? And that looks okay like that, but most ornament caps are going to be gold or silver. And so I'm going to go ahead and paint this. Now, the paint that you use is really up to you and it depends on what you're going to do with this when you're finished with it. If you're not worried about anybody eating this, um, you could go ahead and use a highlighter, which is what I'm using. A highlighter is a non-edible paint uh, that we use to accent things that are not going to be eaten and it's really highly metallic. Um, if you think that someone is going to eat this, then I would suggest using an edible luster dust. But just remember, you're not going to get the same metallic gold finish with a luster dust as you will with a highlighter. So I have some gold highlighter here uh, mixed with Everclear, which is a grain alcohol that will evaporate very, very quickly. And I have it pre-mixed in my bottle for about a ratio of one part powder to one part alcohol. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit in my cup here so you can see that. Look at how beautiful that is. And then we'll just go ahead and paint our ornament cap. And that really makes all those little ridges in your Reese's cup pop out. And I would not paint the bottom of this, okay? All right, now the one thing about highlighter is, is if you touch highlighter with your fingers after you've painted something with it, it could come off on your fingers, especially since this is a chocolate surface. So just like with the ornament, I'm going to go ahead and seal it up with some clear edible glaze, okay? And then you'll just want to let that sit and dry. Okay, I do have an ornament cap here that's dry and ready to go, and we're just going to attach it with a little bit of melted chocolate, the same chocolate that we used to make the ball itself. Now it's important to have enough chocolate on here that it will actually grab onto 
your ornament ball and hold, but you don't want to have so much chocolate on here that it squishes out the sides and you, and you see it squishing out. So just be mindful of that. And I actually like to let that sit for a minute on the, the Reese's because it will melt the Reese's just a little bit and it'll give it a stronger bond when you go to put it on your ornament. Okay, so this here is the top of my ornament. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and just center it right on there like that. And when I do that, I want to go ahead and give it a couple of little twists and press it down at the same time. I want to make sure that this is really grabbing a hold. Okay. And it will get to a point where it'll stop wiggling when you do that. And when you feel that, don't do it anymore because then you'll break the bond. Uh, but this feels good to me. And if I weren't in a hurry, um, I would let that dry naturally. But if you are in a hurry and you wanted, and you wanted this to set up real quick, then you can use some free spray um, that's made especially for chocolates. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and spray a little bit of that underneath. When you are ready, you can go ahead and get your ornament stand, just like that, and put it on there. Look at how pretty that is. And I have another one here in a different color, a different lace pattern. And, and this was actually a bigger lace pattern that I cut the pieces down and, and used them uh, individually like that. Look at how pretty that one is. So you can use your ornaments to decorate a tree, a wreath. You can use them in a centerpiece on your Christmas table. You can hang them on ornament stands like this. Or you can even give them as gifts. Look at what I found at the dollar store. This very cool, move it out of the way, this very cool little gift box, okay? Just put some tissue in, just like that. And then you can put your ornament, chocolate ornament, inside. Now, wouldn't that make a very cool gift? And remember, Fabulace isn't just for decorating cakes or chocolate ornaments. You can also decorate cupcakes and even cookies with it. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I have inspired you guys to make some swanky Fabulace ornaments of your own. And remember, you can find most of the items that we used in this tutorial in our online shop at swankcakedesign.com shop. And if you want to keep up to date with all things Fabulace and Swanky, make sure that you follow our Fabulace Facebook page, as well as our Swank Cake Design Facebook page, and sign up for our newsletter while you're there so you don't miss a thing. Happy Holidays, guys! <laughs>